I'm an immigrant. So, and I care deeply about immigrants who have come to this country and really um, all the generations going back. I know immigration policy like the back of my hand. I'm kind of a policy wonk, so I deal with that every day. And for me, it is, unless you are Native American, you came over either on slave ships unwillingly or seeking some sort of refuge, some sort of economic opportunity, freedom from war, persecution. And so being an immigrant myself, I have a deep personal connection to it. And then of course, working as an immigrant rights activist, I know a lot about the system. So that issue, I think, is just so personal to me. And how we come up with a new moral imagination on immigration in this country is deeply personal. But so are these other things. I've been given opportunities in my life, and my parents were so beautiful in teaching me that if we have opportunities, we have to try to help others to have opportunities as well. And so um, being able to work, I have the Medicare for All bill in the House of Representatives. I believe that health care is a human right and that nobody should wake up in the morning and worry about how they're going to get health care. You know, we just had the first case of somebody dying from the coronavirus in Washington state. And I will tell you that there are going to be more. Just two more cases were just diagnosed. 55 people have symptoms. Um, we have an enormous number of people that apparently are probably going to test positive. And I spoke to the Secretary of Health um, two days ago for our state, and he said, Congresswoman, I'm so worried because people across this country don't seek care when they're sick because they don't know if they can afford it. 70 million people uninsured or underinsured in the richest country in the world. It is absolutely ludicrous that we can't do what every other peer country has done. So these are the things that I deeply believe in, and I believe that if I can wake up tomorrow and if something were to happen to me, um, that I would be able to say, I have spent every minute trying to make the world a better place. And that's really my immigrant experience and the resilience that we all bring when we make these journeys from other parts of the world, in this generation or the previous ones. So you said you're a policy walk, and you, in fact, wrote the Medicare for All bill that in, that's in the house right now. And in our community, a lot of people are business owners. Yeah. We, have, we have small businesses, and we're curious as to how that will affect us yes. and what the benefits are for people who yeah. own and operate businesses. Yes. Could you speak about that a yes, little bit? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Such an important part. And yes, I wrote the bill. It's 125 plus pages. We spent six months um, writing this bill with advocates from around the country. And um, there are many benefits to it, but let me just speak to the business piece first. Um, we, by the way, have had exceptional progress on my bill in the House. For the first time in the history of the House, we've had four hearings on Medicare for All. We have over half of the Democratic Caucus sponsoring the bill, including most of leadership. We also have 30 unions that have uh, sponsored the bill because they know wages are stagnating. And we have an incredible racial justice coalition supporting the bill. Small businesses in particular, we have to level the playing field for small businesses, number one. Um, when you are competing with other businesses around the world and you have to provide health care or you want to or your employees want to or you don't have the choice of the employees you want because you can't provide health care so they go to somebody else that can provide health care, these are all ways in which we are not giving small businesses or businesses in general the ability to compete properly with people around the world whose countries do offer health care. So that's just a whole barrier right there. But the other thing I've heard is, and I come from a district that's very innovative, as I'm sure it is here, lots of innovators in our immigrant communities. If you want to start a business and you're responsible for your own health care or for your employees' health care, that is a huge challenge. There are a lot of people who say to me, I have not been able to have my dream of starting a business because I can't afford health care and I need to work in a job that gives me health care. So that's another benefit when you have a system that, by the way, is tested and tried and true. That's a system of Medicare, one of the most popular systems in the, in the country. Um, but we know it doesn't cover enough things. So all that Medicare for All does is it expands the coverage. So if you're a senior and you need vision or dental, if you need long-term care, you know all of those things that you need are part of the coverage. And then we extend it to cover everyone, not just seniors. So that this is a system that can easily be uh, transferred to everybody in the country. And if we did that, 
we would help businesses in this country be able to save money. I met a small business owner the other day, I think she has about 54 employees. She told me she spends half a million dollars on healthcare for her employees. But in addition to that, she said she still has employees that she pays into their GoFundMe campaigns because they don't have enough money so they start GoFundMe campaigns and as their employer she decides she's going to help them pay for those costs. So these are all the ways in which uh, Medicare for All could help businesses and this year we have an amazing Medicare for All Businesses Coalition. Um, as Warren Buffett himself said, healthcare is an economic tapeworm <coughs> Uh, of competitiveness in the United States. So we have to fix this problem. We cannot spend $55 trillion on health care, which is what we're projected to spend over the next 10 years. That is double what almost every other country has. And guess what? We have the highest maternal mortality in the, of all of our peer countries. We have the highest infant mortality of all of our peer countries and the lowest life expectancy of all of our peer countries. Um, that's just unacceptable. Since we're talking about healthcare, I forgot to mention that one of the bills I'm very proud of that I believe is going to be marked up and hopefully come to the floor this spring is my South Asian Heart Health Bill. And uh, this is uh, super important. We, um, we found, because my former ledge director was Indian American, is Indian American, and his mother passed away very suddenly of a heart attack. And we started to look into this issue and found that Indian Americans and South Asian Americans as a whole have some of the fastest rates of cardiac disease, growth in cardiac disease of any community in the country. And so this bill would actually uh, allow the CDC, give some more money, but also allow the CDC to reach out to Indian American communities and organizations with resources and do more research and really emphasize this growing a crisis of, of heart health and heart disease in the Indian American community. I spoke to Chairman Pallone and I think we're going to be able to mark it up um, hopefully and get it to the floor ideally before June is my, is my goal. But if you haven't already uh, talked to your Congress member about getting on that bill, if they're not already on it, I would encourage you to do so. That's great news yeah. that it's going to the floor. Yeah. Um, so turning to foreign policy, we've seen that President Trump has reached out to President Modi of India, and essentially there are two peas in a pie, at least from the perspective of a lot of people who are watching, especially people who, are, who come from minority groups in India. How do you believe that our relationship with India will change under a democratic administration going forward? Well, I think this is a hard question for all of us in the Indian American community. We know that we're not a monolith here. We know that we have families in India that are affected by what happens in India. We know that if we stand up for human rights here in the United States, we have to stand up for human rights everywhere, including in our countries that we love and countries of birth. Um, and I think that unfortunately, it looks to me like Trump has decided to embrace uh, um, Modi and at the cost of speaking out for human rights and democratic values. And that troubles me greatly. So I do have a resolution that started as a resolution on human rights abuses in Kashmir. Um, it was very specific to communications, to uh, detention without cause, and to, um, uh, and to freedom of religion. And um, we have expanded it now to include the Citizenship Act Amendment as well, because I don't believe that this great country of mine that I was born in and that I was actually a citizen of for 35 years, longer than I've been a US citizen, um, should start instituting religious tests into its citizenship process. That just feels wrong to me as a democracy. So I think... <laughs> and I've been called, you know, a fake Hindu and a fake Indian and all the other things. But um, I would just say that when you love somebody or something, including your country of birth, that it is incumbent on you to call them to their best selves. And one of the things I've been always so proud of in my life about India is that we're the major birthplace or the place of thriving of the world's major, most of the world's major religions. 
And of course, I am a Malayali, so I come from Kerala. We have, you know, we grew up with Muslims, we have the Jewish community, we have the Christians, um, and of course, I'm Hindu. And so we were always taught that that's who we are as India, and we're proud of that. And so we have to make sure that we don't go down a road to fascism, either in the United States or in India, and that we stand up for these countries that we believe thrive because of democratic values. Um, and, and that has to be our goal as we go forward with both Trump and with Modi. Okay, great. So what advice do you have for us here in Illinois as we build power and build coalitions amongst our community and other, within other communities as well? Because you've been all over the United States yeah. organizing, doing the good work. What advice do you have for us? 